What's new at Gamescom is we're showing a now near complete build of Most Wanted. We're in the final uh, month of development, so we've still got a few things to finish. But we're here at Gamescom showing more of the open world, our city of Fairhaven, than we've shown before. We're showing a, a deeper experience in multiplayer. We're also premiering the Vita version of the game with us behind closed doors. And at Gamescom, we're really focusing on uh, talking to people about one of the things we're doing, the progression of the game, and putting all the cars in the world, pretty much over 40 cars in the world from the start of the game, so players can drive around and have free choice. Our philosophy on this game is that players want to be able to do whatever they want, whenever they want to do this. And uh, this is a very different uh, Need for Speed experience than and people have seen before, and it's a very different Criterion experience to what we've offered before. Well, people are bound to compare it to Burnout Paradise, right? Because one, we made it. Two, it was our last open world game. So I, I, I compare uh, GTA and Red Dead Redemption and Bully, I mean, it's, it, it's the same guy. So it's, it's our DNA, right? There's no way we'd follow up. Uh, we can't take a backward step from some of the ideas we pioneered, some of the innovation we pioneered in Paradise. Whether that was collectibles, whether that was easy drive, or, you know, seamless join and frequent challenges. Obviously with Most Wanted, we have to take all those experiences further. We always said that each game was a reflection of who we were at the time. So Paradise represented where we were, that pinnacle burnout experience and, and trying to reinvent ourselves in open world at the arrival of this console generation. So now we're five odd years down the line. So this Most Wanted reflects exactly who we are now. And that means very social, very connected, great freedom for the player. Uh, the game can come to you. I mean, how we see progression and, and uh, offline players change. And this isn't a sequel to the old Most Wanted game. I mean, that was a game of its time as well, right? It was more, more offline than online. It was more single player than multiplayer. It had story. Whereas those things don't really resonate with us now in 2012. We're much more connected. We believe friends are at the heart of any game we make. Uh, and that influences our design and our philosophy. Well, we like, we like a bit of imitation. It's flattering, right? Um, I think still there's very few people who truly understand what Ort Love uh, does. I know our friends at Microsoft really understand it and we talk to them a lot. Autolog 2, it's a far deeper and richer comparison than ever before. In Hot Pursuit, we only compared time. It was just a number. So we're comparing your play. I should be able to choose a car, I should be able to drive around the world, and the game is going to show me what my friends have done at any time. It's not just beat this guy and beat 1 minute 24. It's about I can see what cars my friends have driven. I can see what events they've completed in. I can see how many speed points they've earned. I can see what speed list they've competed in. So Autolog is really, we're using friends to drive how you experience the game. I read books based on either an Amazon recommendation or what my friends have told me. I, I, I consume movies based on what my friends have seen. And I play games in that same way as well. We want all players to experience how we play games at Criterion, which is a group of friends playing together, we're not necessarily all online at the same time, and that's why we're big on like asynchronous gameplay. We could be on different sides of the world, but we're still connected. Um, we just have a particular point of view of, of, of how we see games, and I guess if we were traditionalists, we wouldn't be moving forward, but we're here to like push the boundaries, right? Well, I think we had a couple of unique things, right? One, we have gorgeous cars, gorgeous supercars. I mean, look at these cars behind me on the, on the box, right? If you see our stand, Aston Martin, Porsche, who doesn't want to drive the world's best supercars? And I do. We had Seacrest County, a beautiful location full of the world's best roads. We're always very deliberate on how we, we spend a lot of care on how the roads are. That's why we never built real cities, right? Real cities are boring, they're not fun to drive around. Trust me, I've just got stuck in traffic in Cologne this morning. Um, cities don't make the best racetracks. Racetracks don't mess the best racetracks, they restrict me. I can go on road, in this game I can go off the road. I can go under, over and through buildings. Um, Hot Pursuit also had the cops. I mean, to us, our Need for Speed philosophy is that uh, in Hot Pursuit with supercars and being chased by the police, there's nothing better. Now we see, you know, NFS, hashtag NFS, we see that as FFS. So Need for Speed to us, our vision of Need for Speed is about having fun with your friends on and offline in gorgeous cars and being chased by the law. And there's no better thing. I, like, I play all those racing games you mentioned. I've played racing games since you know, 1979 when they were black and white. I tell you, there's no better feeling than kicking the arse out sideways in a Lamborghini Aventador, being chased by three coppers and having a chopper on my arse. So we like to deliver high action, right? Real life's boring. Wouldn't you want to drive our cars? And again, we, a good friend of mine always says, drive it like you stole it. And that's what we let people do in the game, right? Drive it like you stole it. I know I want to do it.
we didn't join the work business, we joined the games business, right? So we, we just like to have fun, that's just who we are. And uh, it's really important to me that people know this game's made in Britain. Um, we need that. We've just had the Olympics, the eyes of the world were on London. It was a fantastic game, it, it, it inspired a lot of people. And we want to inspire the next generation of game makers. So I want people to know that we work for an American company, Electronic Arts, but this game's made in Britain. And uh, we don't always do a great job of that in our country, of shouting about that, but it is. There's a uh, Guildford is our Silicon Valley. There's a lot of developers in Guildford. And I think we should just get together and celebrate that more. So um, I think we might change the Criterion logo and put the uh, Union flag in it, because I know we really like it. We all wore our 2012 pin badges at E3. And Webb's actually, free. he meant to say God Save the Queen again, and he forgot, yeah. right? I'm mad at him. That's a, as he went on stage, I was like, don't forget. And don't fumble it in German either. But no, he, he just did a runner. I think we were just so glad that Hamish didn't crash in the demo. Yeah. So um, I think he had so much pressure on him in that demo. He's actually home today, sick with the flu. So I hope he gets better. But um, yeah, that's who we are. How we retain our identity. I mean, you just got to be yourself, right? We're just old punks, really. I mean, you know, I grew up in the 70s. So, you know, we've got to have that bit, bit of swagger. Else it's just... Uh, America, America is a tough competitor in gaming and I think people need to know Britain is a very good environment for making games. It's tipping down all the time, so it's good to stay indoors. Anything on burnout at all at this stage? Anything on Any burnout? For, for the burnout games? Think about it all the time. Watch this space. <laughs>